Hi guys, Kieran McAvoy here from A Clever Chimp, and on this channel we talk, learn, and discuss about maths, physics, and all things engineering. This video is part of our guide to engineering maths, and today we're going to be talking about the 3x3 determinant, specifically understanding the patterns within the 3x3 determinant that actually help us remember how to do it today. All of that is coming right up. So I've already done a video about the 3x3 determinant, but it was a video about finding it through the method in which it was actually defined and used, a, a, way, of, a way of determining whether or not there was going to be solutions to a set of linear equations. But in this video, what I want to do is try and look at that now found determinant and understand the patterns behind it. Now, I know it might seem a little bit off topic here, but I want to get your minds thinking about the kind of patterns we're going to be experiencing. So picture this. A waiter brings three distinct pints of beer to a table of three thirsty customers. And unfortunately, this waiter has forgotten whose pint was whose. And the customers had ordered three very similar looking beers, so you can't tell them apart. Luckily, these customers aren't massively fussy, so they graciously accept the mistake and decide to claim a beer as their own, one after each other. My question is, how many ways could they all end up with a beer? If you want to pause the video and have a little go at that, then go right ahead. Otherwise, I'll just carry on into the solution. So let's have a little think about the ways in which they could all select their beers. First off, we could have the first person selecting A, the second selecting B, and the third selecting C. Or we could have the first, A, the second, C, the third, B. Or we could have the first, C, the second, A, and the third, B. Or the first B, the second A, and the third C. Or we could have the first B, the second C, the third A, or the first C, the second B, and the third A. So there's six different ways in which they could select their beer and end up with whatever they had. Now, I don't want to go into it too much because I don't want to sway too far from talking about the 3 by 3 determinant, but the arrangements of these letters are part of a part of maths called combinatorics, and it's very interesting, and it pops up a lot of places in maths. But I want to just mention why there's six. There's six because the first person has three choices, and for each of those potential choices, the second person has two choices. And for each potential choice that second person makes, the third person is left with one choice. And so you have this pattern of three times two because there's two choices after every potential choice the first person makes and times one because there's one choice after every potential choice the second person makes. And so there's a, a three factorial or six different ways that we could arrange these letters, arrange these pints and have these people picking and selecting their pints. So what has this got to do with the determinant? Have a look at the letters in the determinant. They are all an arrangement of these three letters, A, B, and C. And that arrangement, by the way, is called a permutation. It's a permutation of the set A, B, C. It's basically just an anagram. It's just another way of arranging them. Now, the other thing to note here is that every element in each of these terms is not only in a different row, but it's also in a different column. So the actual way in which you work out the determinant is you ask the question of how many ways can I select three elements from this matrix and arrange them in a way that they don't share the same row or the same column. And you're left with this scenario. I fixed, I fixed the columns one, two, and three. So I knew that I needed to pick uh, an element out of column one, an element out of column two, and an element out of column three. And so what you're left with is a combinatorics problem of selecting from different rows. And so it's all to do with then 
how many different ways you can select from the three different rows. And it's exactly the same situation of selecting those three different pints, A, B, and C. So the next thing we need to be asking here is, what's with the adding and taking away? Why are some of the terms added and some of them taken away? To answer this, let's arrange our permutations again. Okay, so I've arranged the permutations in a way that the column that the permutation is in in this table is the column that it's in in the matrix. So for instance, A, B, C, is A1, B2, C3. So what's the pattern? Well, let's have a look at what is called transpositions. And transpositions is just a fancy word for swapping two of the elements in the arrangement. So if we go from ABC to ACB, that's one transposition because we've swapped B and C, okay? And if we go from ACB to CAB, that's two transpositions from the initial ABC. And then continuing on like that, from CAB to BAC, that's three transpositions. That's three swaps from the original ABC. And this continues. BCA is four transpositions and CBA is five transpositions. And now an interesting thing about this is that the number of transpositions required to get to a certain arrangement from another arrangement will always either be, once it's found, once it's found, it will always remain either even or odd, depending on what it actually is. So for instance, to get to CBA from ABC, we've said that it's five transpositions, but it can also be one transposition because we could just swap A and C but it will always be odd it can't be two transpositions or four transpositions because we won't end up with the same thing so with this in mind let's make it a little bit more obvious the number of transpositions from A, B and C just the minimum that we needed to do to get to this permutation or arrangement we've got ACB is 1, CAB is 2, BAC is 1, BCA is 2 and C B, A is 1. So let's have a look at the determinant again alongside this new information. What is it that we can deduce is the pattern here? It's quite clear that all the permutations that require an odd number of transpositions are all negative in working out the determinant. And all of the permutations that are requiring an even number of transpositions are positive. And this is the pattern across all determinants. The sign of each permutation within the determinant is minus one to the power of the number of transpositions required to get to that from the leading diagonal. So with running the risk of releasing spoilers, I'll just show you the 4x4 four four determinant and it's exactly the same thing. It works exactly the same way. We have 24 permutations of A, B, C, and D because there's four, four elements to be arranging here that don't share the same row or the same column. And so fixing the columns, we have permutations of A, B, C, and D, which means following the logic that we've learned from the three by three determinant is four factorial permutations, four times three times two times one, which is 24 permutations. I think you can understand why it's very rare that an exam will ask you to work out a 4x4 four four determinant. With 24 terms, you, you know, it's just asking for trouble. Because notice that I haven't written it out by hand. I got an algorithm called the Heaps algorithm, if you actually want to have a look at it, um, to work out the all of the different terms here, just to make sure that I didn't mess up and miss one, you know? So thanks very much for watching guys. I really hope this has given you some understanding and has shed some light on the patterns within determinants for matrices, specifically the three by three. But as you've seen, this is the, the permutations and understanding the transpositions is the pattern for all determinants. If you like the video, then I'd really appreciate it if you left it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with a clever chimp then that would be fantastic as well thanks very much for watching guys i will see you all in the next video bye bye